Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Tom Robbins. I'm with Kentico, and uh, I really appreciate everyone taking the opportunity to join us this morning as we talk about a really fantastic integration that we have with Question Mine. Uh, if you're not familiar with Question Mine, I think it's probably better to, to take a step back uh, and think about how you're actually using your website today. I mean, obviously, one of the, the, the big things that we want on our website is to figure out what people are doing. And video is tremendously important in the web today. I mean, every site you go to, you have video of some kind. One of the problems that we have with video is how do we know what people are doing it? How do we use it to really generate leads and, and to really make it active? And that's been one of the, the big issues that I've seen uh, as we've built out sites and worked with partners. So Kentigo really saw this as a, as a pretty major issue, and we, we started talking to a company called Question Mine, who uh, really does make uh, video interactive, and, and they were kind enough to put together a fantastic integration with Kentico EMS that gives you an opportunity to take your video and EMS really to the next level and to bring all of that together in a fantastic plat platform that's a combination of Question Mine and Kentico EMS. So joining me today, who's really going to talk about this more, uh, is Lance Schulderberg, who is with Question Mine. And Lance has been kind enough to, to come and spend a little bit of time with us uh, to show us what exactly Question Mine is. And then we're going to talk about the integration with Kentico CMS. Uh, and all, as always, we're going to record this. And we will go ahead and make it available uh, via DevNet. So as we can hop into this, Lance, I'm going to turn it over to you. OK, great. Thanks so much, Tom. Um, as Tom mentioned, uh, we we met, and uh, it, this has been several months ago, and and we learned from I learned from Tom what Kentico was doing, and he learned what Question Mine was doing, and we saw a lot of great uh, integration points. So we we put together an integration with Kentico to be able to take um, what we're doing at Question Mine and what's going on at Kentico, and 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 uh, combine that together for some really powerful marketing. So uh, Question Mine plus Kentico equals awesome. Uh, I love this slide here. Uh, I'll walk through and demonstrate some of the functionalities of Question Mine today and then show how the integration with Kentico works. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is just walk through a couple of the key points that we'll be covering today. Um, so with the Question Mine Kentico integration, there are several things that uh, that you'll be able to do. One is, as Tom mentioned, Question Mine enables you to uh, do a lot with video on your website. And some of those things are that you're going to be able to generate leads by adding lead capture forms directly into a video. And so we'll, we'll so we will show some examples of that. Um, you'll also be able to qualify these leads by adding questions that appear during the video. So at any point in the video, you can include uh, multiple choice questions, free response questions, etc. cetera. Uh, you can track the video engagement. So even if you're not uh, using questions, uh, you will be able to track the video engagement metrics, such as the time of video viewed, the percentage of video viewed, and then use that inside of Kentico to segment and score uh, and do different things based on how much of your video people are engaging with. And then based on all of those metrics, whether it's questions, uh, lead capture forms, the, the metrics, you're able to customize website content and your marketing efforts based on that interaction. So if someone answers questions a specific way or uh, if they watch to a certain point in the video, you can segment them def differently and customize the website content to them. And then last of all, you're also able to drive e-commerce by including call to action buttons during the video, such as buy now or add to cart. And so including all of these things right within the video experience. Um, the next thing that I want to show, this one I actually can't show on screen as it's a mobile, a, a, a mobile demo. Um, but for any of you that are, that are watching, um, pull out your smartphone and imagine that you are in a convenience store and go ahead and text the word coupon to this phone number to get a coupon for a free Diet Pepsi. 
Um, so this is this is going to be recorded. These slides will be shared. So if you if you don't have your phone on you right now, you can you can uh, try this later. I'll just walk through verbally right now what will happen when someone does this. As you text the word coupon to this phone number, you'll get a text message back that says something to the effect of, uh, give us some feedback on this commercial, it's a Diet Pepsi commercial, and we'll send you a coupon for a free Diet Pepsi. So then you'll uh, open up the video right on the phone, and while the video plays, there are questions that are included in the video uh, about whether you're a Pepsi drinker or a Coke drinker, uh, are you more likely to buy a Diet Pepsi after watching this commercial? So collecting feedback, and then after you've watched that video, engaged with the video, it will send you a coupon code for free Diet Pepsi. So I wanted to just highlight that as uh, right now, video is extremely hot in the market, but especially mobile video. So I, I wanted to show a mobile video example um, likewise, any of the videos that you take and put in your, in your website or if you want to embed it on Facebook or any place that you take that video, if someone watches from a mobile device, they'll be able to have the same interactive experience whether they're on an iPad, uh, an iPhone, an Android phone, or their uh, PC or Mac computer. So just to highlight that uh, the, the platform is very flexible. Now let's dive into a couple of examples of this. The first example here is on uh, maryfreebed.com and this is a Kensico website and what they're doing here is they're actually pulling a YouTube video and playing it through the question mind player to add different levels of interactivity including like we'll show here a lead capture form. Uh, so they're tracking the video engagement, how long people are watching, when people are dropping off, and then they're also including a lead capture form, uh, and I'll, I'll push play here to, sh to highlight that feature of the lead capture. Just a couple of examples where we're listening and uh, therapists are speaking. Our goal is for this hospital to be the best rehabilitation hospital in the world. So I wanted to highlight just the very end of that video um, and point out that you can put a lead capture form like this one. Thanks for watching. Want to know more about the Mary Freebed Construction Project? Enter your name and email to be subscribed to latest updates. You can put lead capture forms like this at any point in the video. It doesn't just have to be at the end. In this case, uh, the lead capture form was chosen to be at the end. But you could put a lead capture form at the beginning of your video. So a person would have to opt in to watch the content if you have content that uh, you only want people to see if they've opted in. Um, you could also put the lead capture form at any point in the video. So you might have the, the first minute of the video uh, introducing the topic and then a lead capture form come in that says to get access to the rest of this content, please enter your name, email, phone number, whatever fields that you're asking for there. So there's an example of a lead capture form in a video. Um, I want to show a different example of some of the functionality. You can also include call to action buttons right in the video. So I've, I've fast forwarded this video to the point where the call to action button appears. Uh, and in this case, this is a guy named Mike, Mike Weiss and he teaches people how to build uh, video marketing funnels. And as part of his video marketing funnel, he's driving people to register for a webinar. So in his, in his video, he's included this call to action button here, register for webinar. If you are an e-commerce site and you're selling clothing or shoes or anything like that, you could put an add to cart button right within the video. You could put a buy now button in the video. Any call to action that you want someone to take while they're watching the video experience, you can include that right within the video and make it actionable. That could be something as simple as uh, click here to download our free white paper. Whatever, whatever call to action you want to include, and that can be custom designed. Um, this is a, an example of a register for webinar button uh, that's yellow, but you could have any button that you want uh, to be included, and you could say, I want this to, to come into the video at, say, 10 minutes and 30 seconds, and I want it to remain in the video until the end. So 100% flexibility of when and where that appears in the video. 
Now this next example that I'll show, I want to show the, the whole video. This is, I, I chose this one because it's very short. We can run through it quickly. Uh, it's just a 30 second clip. Uh, this, is, this is one, uh, this guy, Dr. Scott, he is a dental marketing consultant. So he helps dentists with their marketing practices. And he's using this video on his website. I'm showing it just on a blank white canvas. Um, but he, he's using this video on his site to track uh, if dentists are interested in his services and to capture leads. So I'll go through and show a couple of questions in this video as well as a lead capture form. Are you ready to improve your online presence? With the help of Dr. Scott Consulting, you can get your business online. So you can see there that you've included a, he's included a question, how would you rate your current online presence? So the question came in early on, and it then paused the video to wait for the person to answer. You have flexibility with how you want that to work. You could say, I want the question to come in at 8 seconds, and I want the video to run until 20 seconds, and then I want the video to pause and wait for the person to answer. Or if you don't want the video to pause, uh, you simply don't require an answer, and the question will disappear if they have an answer. So I'm going to say as a, as a dentist that my current online marketing is below average. Oh, your advertising costs and target for ideal patients. It truly is as simple as it sounds. Another question there, would I like to improve my online marketing? Yes. Take those old advertising and marketing strategies, toss them out, and get you into the conversation happening all around you, everywhere online. And if online marketing confuses you, it won't after Dr. Scott's help. It's time to make sure your patients can find you online. Let's profit from the world of online marketing. Don't get left behind. Get started now. So again, I wanted to just show a couple of the functionalities there. The, the questions, the ability to capture that information, and then the ability to capture the lead. And then um, we'll dive into the question line admin, show a little bit how easy it is to set some of this stuff up, and then also showing the integration with Kentico. So any of the pieces of data that you've captured, whether it's the answer to a question, the time of the video viewed, the, the lead with the name, email, phone number, etc., all of that can be sent directly into Kentico uh, through the integration. So just quickly, when you dive into the question mine admin, I just want to do a, an overview here. There are several things that you can create. At its most basic level, question mine is video hosting platform. So you can take your video, add a lead capture form, a call to action button, etc., and then put it on your site or anywhere that you want to embed it. As you move across from left to right, um, you can add some more functionality. So a video poll is the ability to add one question in your video and then show people afterwards the result. So you're familiar with polls. You see a poll online that says, um, are you a Republican or a Democrat? And then it shows afterwards that 50% of people said Republican, 50% of people said Democrat. So you can do the same thing with a poll uh, or with a video. And we also have the non-video version of that. The interactive video survey, like the one that we just looked at, is the ability to add multiple questions and collect that information. Um, the, the survey is the non-video version of that, so if you wanted to just have a page survey and then take those answers and run that back into Kentico, you can. The video quiz adds the ability to score uh, people's answers. So the difference between the video survey and the video quiz is inside of question mine, you can say the answer to this question is worth five points, the answer to this question is worth zero points, this answer is worth one point, and you can do a score uh, based on their answers and show people their score at the end. So you could say, you know, you scored a nine out of ten. So you can do a fun quiz. You could also use that uh, along with Kentico for the lead scoring. And then um, I won't dive into too much the rest of these. Just quickly, the automated webinar. That's that's the ability for you to take one of your uh, webinar presentations that you've done. Uh, let's say you, you record your webinar presentation, and then you want people to be able to register for that and watch it at different times, uh, you would be able to put that on autopilot. So a person would be able to register for your webinar, even though it's pre-recorded, and watch it at a specific time. So they'll get a, wel or a welcome email that says, hey, thanks for registering, and then maybe an hour before the webinar starts. Uh, don't forget that your webinar is in an hour, 
and that whole process is automated and uh, pre-recorded. Um, the video branch is coming soon. That's the ability to build a choose your own adventure video. So imagine as you're watching, you answer a question, and the video dynamically changes, and you are literally choosing your own adventure as you watch the video and answer the question. So that's coming. And the Ad Viral is a Facebook social sharing feature where you can uh, build a Facebook post and then invite people to share with their friends. So I want to just run a, a, do a quick overview of that to show the, the platform of Question Mine and that there, there are several different things that you can do and then integrate all of those back into Kentico. So we'll dive into the admin for one of these specific projects. We watched that Dr. Scott Consulting demo and we'll dive in now to see how that was created, how you could create this simply for yourself, and then how you'd be able to integrate that with your Kentico EMS. So the, the first step here is adding a video. So under video upload, you have a couple of options. You can upload your video directly to Question Mine, and Question Mine, as I mentioned, is a full hosting platform. Um, you could take a video from YouTube and just take the URL of the YouTube video and run that through the Question Mine player. Or if you have videos hosted on Amazon, you can link directly up to your Amazon hosting account and pull your videos from there. So any of the options, grab your video, bring it into the Question Mine system, and then you'll be able to distribute it with all of the interactivity. I'll show um, how easy it is to add questions to the video. So you can see the two questions that we looked at earlier. How would you rate your current online presence? And would you like to improve your online marketing? We'll go ahead and add a new question. And to add the question, you simply select a question type from multiple choice, uh, select all that apply, so that would be checkbox answers where they can select two or more options. Uh, multiple choice, select one, so that would be radio buttons, they can only select one of the options. Yes, no, true, false, short answer and long answer would be a chance for them to enter in text. So you might ask, uh, you might put a, a question that says, do you have any additional comments or suggestions for us? They'd be able to type that in. With the statement, you can put text in the video that is not a question. So if you want to just put some instructional text and say, I want this to appear in the, in the video at 45 seconds, that says, the next three questions are about this topic. You can put a, quest or a statement directly in the video that way. Um, date and time is a drop down, so if you, let's say it's a restaurant, and you ask, when was the last time you visited our restaurant? They could select from the date and time. The add viral question is that feature I mentioned before of building a Facebook post and then asking people if they'd be willing to share it. So you would be able to have that Facebook post with a coupon on it uh, or, or a discount of some sort and then ask, uh, would you be willing to share this coupon with your friends? And they would be able to then share that uh, on Facebook. And then the question rating is uh, a star rating, so you'd be able to select how many stars you want them to be able to rate uh, you out of, and so the question might be, please rate your experience uh, on a, uh, out of five stars, and they could select how many stars. So we'll, we'll use that as an example, we'll just say, please rate your experience. And then to select where in the video the question appears, uh, you can move this around. So I want to run this question from 16 seconds in my video, until 19 seconds in my video, or let's say uh, another way to edit this rather than dragging is you can actually click on it. So I'm going to move that to 20 seconds. Um, and then you can require an answer. And if I require the answer, it's going to pause the video right at this point and wait for the person to answer before continuing. So if you want to, if you want to make sure that the question gets answered, uh, require an answer and then it will pause at that point and the person will answer and then when they hit continue, the video will continue to play. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this one out. I won't actually add that question in there and close this. So under in, in each project, the, the flow of creating this is create and then customize, distribute, and then reports. Under create is where you add your video, add your questions. Um, you also can select your video settings. So you can customize uh, how the how the end user views your video. Whether you want to give them no control, meaning they can't pause the video at all, uh, they can just sit and watch, uh, or you can give them pause play control, where they can pause it but not 
move forward or backward. Full control would allow them to move anywhere in the video. And review would allow them to go back, but not forward. So you have different options depending on the goal of your campaign. You can also choose not to show the control bar at all. Show the control bar only if the person mouses over the video. And if you are going to show the control bar, you can show the amount of time of the video. Um, and then you also have the autoplay option here. If I want to have the video begin playing right when the web page opens, that would be autoplay. Or um, I can actually require them to click play. Autoplay is really good if you're going to send out uh, a link to the video in an email. So let's say you're emailing out uh, to your list of customers and prospects and you put a link to the video. If they click on that link, they're expecting to see the video anyway. So it's good to have it on autoplay uh, instead of having them click play again. Um, if you just have it on your website, it can be a good idea to have the, the splash screen or the video poster that appears uh, first and then they click play on that to play the video. I'll go ahead and cancel those settings out. Uh, now I'll dive into customize. I want to show just a couple of the features uh, and then the Kentico integration. In customize, I wanted to show the lead capture. So you can, as I mentioned, you can choose to show the lead capture at the end of the video, at the beginning of the video, uh, or you can even show it at a specific time. So if you wanted the lead capture to appear 20 seconds into the video, you can set it up that way. What fields you're asking for. Uh, and then you can choose what the lead capture form says. So in the example we looked at there, it said enter your information below if you'd like to learn more about how we can build a customized marketing plan for your practice. Uh, and so you can customize what that lead capture form looks like. Um, now I'll talk just briefly about this option, hide the opt-in form if the fields are present in the URL parameter. Uh, if you already have this person on your list, if they're already one of your contacts, you may want them to watch the video and track all of their viewing behavior, track their answers to questions, but you don't want to ask them for their email again because you already know who they are. Well, if you email them a link to the video or if you have, the, if you have them on your site and you know who they are, um, you can hide the opt-in form um, by including the, their parameters like email in the URL. Or there's a way to set this up in Kentico with macros. Um, if, you, if you embed the macro uh, into the question mind embed code, you'd be able to pick up the email off of that macro and hide the opt-in form. I know that gets a little bit technical. Uh, don't worry too much about that. But if you have someone watching your video and you want to track all of their engagement and analytics without asking for their name and email, et cetera, um, if you already know who they are, there is a way to track all of that without asking them again for their contact details. We, we showed a call to action button that was a register for webinar. You have the option when you create your call to action, you can create your own call to action uh, by just using the HTML editor and, in, and putting in your own image. Or if you want to just use some text, um, you could have click here for more information. And then hyperlink that. So you'd be able to put a hyperlink in. And that could be your call to action button. Uh, or you can use the default call to action. Um, add to cart, you could change the text to buy now, register for webinar, and then the URL of, of the order form or whatever page you want to send them to uh, with that call to action button. And again, then you can choose where you want that call to action to appear. So if I want my call to action to appear near the end of my video, uh, I would select that my call to action was going to be in the video from 25 until 32 seconds. All right, so now after the, that introduction to the functionality, I want to dive into the Kentico integration. So in the Kentico integration, if I click on the Kentico icon, there are several areas of information that I can send into Kentico. One is the time of the video viewed. So if I, if I want to send the time of the video viewed in, um, I would uh, select to allow this activity. And what's going to happen is, when a person leaves the video, let's say they leave at 35 seconds, uh, there will be an activity created in Kentico. You can change the activity type or the activity name, um, but the activity value will be the, the amount of the video that they watch, the time of the video that they watched. So the, if they watch 35 seconds, the activity value would be 35. 
and you would be able to then run your segmentation off of that, um, your scoring off of that, and so you would know in Kentico the exact amount of time that the person viewed your video. Likewise with percentage of video, if you want to do it off percentage instead of exact seconds, you, could, you would know from 0 to 100 what percent of the video was viewed. Uh, and that will go into uh, Kentico as an activity. The reason we set that up with the activity value is you can use activity values in Kentico for a whole lot of things. You can use it to, to do segmentation, to do lead scoring. Um, all, of the, all of the different, even the, the automation processes um, based off of activity values. And so we're putting that in as an activity value. Another way that we're using the activity value is actually to send uh, video, so not a, not a great example, but leaves between 20 seconds and 30 seconds. I want to use Kentico to create an activity. So um, for example, if someone clicks on the Add to Cart button, I'm going to use Kentico to create an activity, and the, the activity value there is clicks on the Add to Cart button. So I would be able to track that uh, in Kentico that that person clicked on my Add to Cart button, or they left early. Uh, any of those trigger criteria, I would be able to create activities in Kentico off of that. So now let's jump uh, into Kentico and see where that data has now been sent from Question Mine into Kentico. Uh, let me log, un, or, uh, log back in. There we go. So one way that the data is sent, all of the answers to the questions will be put into an activity uh, in the comment. So this would be if you would just want to capture that data and have it all in that comment there. So the activity type here, question mind project filled. This was that project we looked at, Dr. Scott Consulting demo. Uh, and I see the answers here, below average and yes. Um, so this is one way that the values there are sent in. Uh, as I mentioned also, you can send those directly as uh, an activity value. So the activity value, we mentioned that one question was a yes or no question. So the activity value there showing up here is yes, and it's tied directly to that contact that filled out the video. I apologize that I have to unlock each of these screens. Um, again, the activity value below average. So that person uh, mentioned that their online marketing efforts right now are below average, and so that activity value showing up there in Kentico is below average. One more time. Um, and then the... This was a different example. This was that Pepsi example that we, the mobile example uh, that we looked at earlier. Uh, and this was the question mine time. So I mentioned that you can send the time of the video in. So the activity value here was 31.44 seconds. So we know to the exact second when someone uh, leaves the video. So 31.44 seconds, this person left. And then you can take that activity value and do whatever you want with it. So I know that this person watched 31.44 seconds. I'm going to close out of this and just highlight quickly some of the, the different things that you could do there. So we have all of the activities, um, but once you have those activity values, you could do um, processes with that. And I won't dive into that. I, I'm not the, the Kentico expert there. Um, I'll invite Tom if he wants to share a little bit more about that, he can. Uh, but you can do processes off of that. You can also do scoring. So you could create scores off of the activity values there. And you can also create contact groups. Um, and so you might just group people based on their video engagement. You could say, this contact group is very engaged in my video because they stayed for longer than 10 minutes of my 15-minute video. This contact group uh, is not very engaged. They left within the first minute. And then you could segment off of that and do your follow-up based, uh, based on that different segmentation. So um, with that overview and showing the integration and some of the, the different ways uh, that you can run segmentation, et cetera, uh, I wanted to open it up and ask if there are any questions at all. Tom, if you have um, seen any questions coming in in the chat box. Absolutely. We, we have a few and, uh, that I've collected. Uh, so the first one is... Um, what kind of best practices for video marketing uh, would Question Mine recommend and things that people have seen based on your experience with customers and that kind of thing? 
Awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, that that's going to vary quite a bit based on the campaign. So let, I'll break it down into a couple of different campaign types. So um, for for an e-commerce site, um, for for some of our customers that are doing e-commerce and they're really just trying to sell, um, they're not necessarily trying to generate leads, um, but they're just trying to sell products directly. Um, the best practice that I've seen there is just enabling the simple add to cart, buy now, right within the video. Because sites like that, they have a lot of content and they're, they're showing all of the different products that they're offering. Um, but there's often multiple clicks required for a person to go and purchase that. So while someone's watching a, a video and they're, they're le learning about a shoe, for example, uh, and they're, they're seeing the commercial for that shoe or whatever it may be, uh, if they have to close out of the video and then go back to the site and then scroll down and then find the buy now button or, or add to cart or whatever it may be, it's just adding a lot of friction to that process. So enabling purchasing right within the video. Um, and in, in that case, uh, I would recommend uh, if, you're, if you're just trying to sell within the video, not, in, not including the questions uh, or some of the other interactive features. Um, it's kind of a, a pick and choose. For the e-commerce, I would say don't include the questions. Um, focus on the one goal of that video, which is to sell the product. And, and we've seen a lot of success with that, where people have been able to sell right off of their videos, whether it's a physical product or a uh, information product, a training product, uh, several, several different things there. Now on the flip side, in uh, B2B marketing, we have a lot of customers who are doing B2B marketing. And what they do with these videos is they're, they're sending out uh, like a, a, a pitch deck video or a video that describes their services and they'll send it out in an email. And what they want is they want to capture the engagement level and the interest level of the person that is watching the video. So in that case, using the questions versus they, they know they're not going to make a sale of their high-end product that costs a lot of money. Um, just off of someone clicking buy now. So their goal is to gauge, you know, I, I sent out this email to a, to a thousand prospects. I, I, I need to know where to spend my time as a salesperson, as a B2B salesperson to get on the phone and who I'm going to be talking to. So their, the best practice there is scoring people based on their engagement with the video. So if someone watched the whole video, score them higher uh, and get on the phone and call them right away. Um, if they opened the video and left and didn't stay very long, um, keep them in the nurture campaign. Keep sending them stuff, nurturing them along, uh, rather than trying to get on the phone and call them right now. Uh, and then also, as someone, based on the way people answer questions, again in that B2B example, if someone, uh, if you ask a couple of questions about where they are in the buying process uh, and um, how likely, or are they the decision maker, another very popular question. Uh, based on that information, scoring them higher uh, and then being able to uh, know who the prospect is, the most hot prospect, and get on the phone and call them. Okay, great. And then uh, another question, which I think you've already answered, but it might be good to, to reiterate, is as people think about using, uh, you know, obviously CMS, we, we, can, we can demonstrate this as well, but um, how do people think about return on investment when using question mine uh, how would you explain that back up to the you know selling it to your boss uh, as to why I should use question mine yeah no that's a that's an awesome question uh, return on investment with question mine the the question that I would ask them in return is what's your current return on investment in the in your video assets because we have a lot of we, we come across a lot of people who spend a lot of money on video and then the only thing that they're tracking, if they're tracking anything, is did someone click on my video? Um, and and when, with question mine, now you're able to say, not only did someone click on my video, but are they engaged with my video? And which of my videos is performing better and leading to sales? So um, we, we actually ROI is the question. And one thing that we help you do is to track the ROI of your video assets. So you know on your, on your site, not only who's clicking on my videos or you know, did they click, uh, but also which video now, if you're, if you're tracking that, if you're tracking the video engagement 
with Kentico, back with all of the other uh, things that you're capturing about a person in the in that marketing process, all the way to the sale. Uh, you're you're able to say, okay, this video is performing better than that video in leading to sales, or this video is performing. Uh, performing well in this area, this video is performing well in this area, and you can even run split tests on that to know uh, which video is leading to a greater overall ROI for you. So the, one of the, the huge ROI benefits for Question Mine is that now you're, you don't have wasted assets in video. Um, with, those, with those assets that you have, if you're not tracking them well and if you don't know how they're performing, you're spending a lot of money creating these assets and you don't know if they're doing anything for your bottom line. Okay, that's great. And those people listening, if you have questions, uh, go ahead and, and certainly send them in. Um, the, the other question was that we got was, uh, are you seeing any differences when you're working with, with social channels? So the, the person who asked this question, um, I, I got a little bit more information, is doing a fair amount of social work and he's trying to figure out if there's, you know, if he should think about doing maybe different things with his video uh, off of Twitter versus Facebook versus LinkedIn. Um, and are you seeing anything with your, your customers doing maybe different questions that they might ask for Twitter or for Facebook, uh, you know, or differences in how they, they might work with Question Mind in their videos based off the social channel? And you may not, and that's okay, they said. Okay, no, that, that's a that's a really fair question. The the one thing that I'll point out, I, I don't know necessarily um, which questions are going to work better on on Twitter versus Facebook. That's um, that would require uh, quite a bit of testing to see on, on that perspective. But one thing that I'll point out is um, you know we're, we're talking about right now embedding a video on a Kentico site, um, but you even if you embed the video on Facebook or send a link to the video on Twitter and that, and that video is, is on, uh, on your blog or you know, somewhere else, you are still going to track all of those analytics back into Kentico. So um, the, I don't know if this was, was made clear, but even if the video is not literally embedded on a Kentico site, you mentioned social, if you have it on one of your social channels, all of the analytics, the leads, the answers to questions, uh, all of that, even if the video is somewhere else, is still being tracked back into Kentico uh, and can be used for all of these same uh, automation processes and scoring, et cetera. So the, one of the big benefits there is you can have your videos anywhere. You can have your videos on social, uh, wherever you want to put it, and you can still track all of your analytics back in one place. Uh, you can track all the anal analytics inside of Question Mind first. You have a full reporting dashboard inside of Question Mind. But you can run that into Kentico uh, no matter where a person is engaging with your video. Okay, great. Um, that was the last question that I saw. Unless anyone wants to go ahead and send in uh, another one, we'll, we'll give everyone a, a second to do that. Um, and Lance, if people were interested in more information, uh, what's the best way for them to get in touch with uh, you or uh, Question Mind? So um, you can contact uh, me and as well as uh, others in the company directly at support at questionmind.com. Uh, emails sent there will be sent to the proper person within the company. So you can you can uh, email directly to support at questionmind.com. Um, you can also check out the website questionmind.com. Um, pricing is found at questionmind.com slash pricing. Uh, it's a it's a month to month model. There's no long term contract. Uh, it's a monthly subscription. Uh, and you can see the, the different prices there uh, directly at questionmind.com slash pricing. Excellent. Well, I don't see any additional questions, so we're going to go ahead and, and wrap up today's webinar. Uh, Lance, uh, thanks for joining us today, and uh, we appreciate you spending the time showing us uh, a very cool integration with Kentico EMS. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. and. Uh, we are recording this, and we will make it available at uh, our DevNet slash, uh, DevNet slash video site within the next several days. Everyone have the great rest of your day or your early evening, depending on where you're located. Thank you. Bye-bye.